Hi everyone, welcome back to Plant Boy. It is very early on a Sunday morning here, and today I thought it would be interesting if I kind of took you along my morning routine whenever I dedicate my morning to plant care. Very often I really only do this maybe twice a week, depending on the week, especially through the winter months. Uh, the plants do not require nearly as much attention as they do not need nearly as much water. However, um, in between these transition months, I find it very important to monitor for pests, especially because I just brought in everything from the porch and I've noticed some mites on various different plants and things like that. So we are going to kind of monitor these plants as I go along and see if anything needs watered. Uh, but before I do any of that, I'm going to get some coffee and I will see you in a minute. Okay, so now that we have our little indie um, short film coffee moment over, uh, I'm going to walk you through kind of my little routine here. So first thing first, I have my watering can here. This is just filled with uh, tap water, uh, ambient temp, like a room temp, if not slightly warmer, would do just fine. Um, if you have specific plants that prefer more of like a filtered water, you could definitely do that or distilled. I'm looking at you, Calatheas, um, but my plants don't seem to mind it. I also have a rag in my back pocket here and some drip trays. Um, I've been battling not having the proper drip trays in certain areas, so I bought some more and I'm going to put them underneath any plants that need them. And the rag is in case I dribble any water anywhere, I need to wipe that up. So this is a Scandapsis pictus exotica, I believe, and we can see that it has some yellowing leaves here. Um, However, these are the lowest leaves on these vines, so I'm not really concerned. What this kind of signals to me is that the plant is starting to conserve its energy for the winter months and it is actually killing back the oldest growth because it is no longer benefiting the plant. So I'm going to go through and just remove all of these old leaves or prune them back, whatever I need to do. Yell uh, yellowing leaves can also be a sign of pests. However, I did inspect this earlier this week. I looked around the base of the leaves and where the petiole meets the leaf itself, and I wasn't seeing any kind of signs of mites or anything like that, so I'm not really concerned by this at all. Now, as I go around and water all of my plants here, I'm going to be keeping an eye out for any kind of mites or anything like that. Specifically with the pest problem, I find um, that it's very beneficial to have a flashlight and if you need a magnifying glass. More specifically with mites, I found it very helpful to kind of hold my flashlight up on my phone behind these plants and look at them from this angle. And backlighting these plants makes it much easier to see any kind of mites or any kind of webbing that is very difficult to see just with the blind eye without adequate light. So if you have mite problems and you need to really find the webbing much more accurately, I would definitely backlight your plant, whether it be with sunlight or you know a flashlight or anything like that. As I go around, I'm going to look for watering requirements. I'm going to make sure that the majority of my plants are drying out at least the first two inches of soil, especially through the off-growing season months. These plants do not use nearly as much water. Uh, this Scandapsis pictus, as well as pretty much every plant in this room that I'm showing you does prefer to dry out almost entirely. So I'm going to use my finger and dig down into the soil. If you're averse to getting any kind of dirt on your hands, I mean, come on. But you can get a soil probe and um, assess the moisture level with a soil probe, or you can also get like a chopstick and stick the chopstick down into the soil. And if any dirt comes back out of the pot and sticks to the chopstick, that's because there is moisture left down in the pot. However, if that chopstick comes out entirely clean, that's a sign that the soil is completely dry and it is time for another watering. 
So feeling the soil, it does feel a little damp still down in there. And let me also show you here. You should be able to tell just by how it feels, but with the way that my finger looks here, you can see that there is a little bit of dirt left on my finger. Um, if this soil was completely dry, there would be less dirt on my finger. And if it was completely wet, there would be much more dirt on my finger. So similar to the chopstick method, the amount of dirt that is left on your finger after assessing the moisture is going to tell you a lot about the moisture that is in the pot itself. I do believe that it is time to water the skin depths. I've picked us a little more, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you what that looks like. And then I will also just kind of insert a clip of me walking around this room a little bit sped up and also kind of checking the moisture level of all of the plants in this room and watering if necessary. All right, so that little section is done. You saw me kind of assess the moisture level of different plants and I kind of rearranged things as well. I assessed that area for pests and didn't really see anything. So now as we continue to move through the space, you will see me assess all of the other plants and act accordingly. Um, it's important to note that many people uh, recommend watering earlier in the day. That way you have extra sunlight throughout the day hours to kind of evaporate any kind of excess moisture that may be around the root system, thus kind of mitigating any chance of rot. However, if you really only have the opportunity to water at nighttime and your plant really needs it, then go ahead and do that. It's not going to be a detriment to your plant if you are watering at night. Um, I just chose to get up early this morning and get it in early this morning rather than, you know, right around dawn time. So let's continue.
All right, everyone. So that's basically my plant care routine around the house here. Honestly, it's really not a lot of work. I just kind of go around, check the watering, look for pests and things like that. Through the winter months, we don't have to worry about fertilizing really or anything like that. So it's relatively straightforward. Really the worst part is finding pests. As we saw earlier on that Diffenbachia tropic snow, there are some spider mites on that. So I'm actually going to spray a pesticide as well as some neem oil on there. The pesticide that I've been attempting to use that has worked relatively so far within the past few weeks is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. Um, it works for mealybugs and spider mites. It's designed specifically for outdoor plants. It is harmful to bees and things like that. So I do use it on my house plants, but I do take it outside and I spray it in an open air area and I let it dry out completely or I take it into the garage if it's not, you know, warm enough outside for the plant to tolerate, you know, such a large temperature fluctuation. But yeah, everyone, that is how I take care of all of the plants around the house. There's a few upstairs, but there's really nothing different I do for them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed kind of following me around and seeing how I take care of all of these different plants throughout the week. Really, it takes me about 30 minutes twice a week, so an hour a week. If there's some pests or anything like that, it can take me maybe up to three hours a week uh, through the winter months. It's really not a whole lot of work and it's definitely uh, worth the payoff to have all of these cool kind of tropical plants in the space. So I will see you all in the next video, I hope. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more. I will see you all later. Bye.